Hi guys, this short rant that'll get me branded, I'm quite sure is some sort of redneck racist pig, uh, goes out to anyone, uh, and I'm included in this gang, or at least I was until recently, anyone planning to move to Latin America for whatever reason. My, my reason for moving to Latin America was, was some some idea that you would have a better chance of surviving the oncoming end times, the collapse of the, the U.S. economy and the rising police state and all, you know. But I don't care what your reason is. This is going out to anyone who has any dream of moving to Latin America. I don't care whether, whether it's Mexico or Tierra del Fuego or anywhere in between. My spot was actually Peru is where I ended up uh, buying my property and building a house. Fortunately, I only sunk twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000 into it, into, the, in, into this madcap dream. I'm only down uh, between 12 and 13 grand, although a lot of gringos rented a hell of a lot deeper than me, uh, kicking themselves a lot harder than I'm kicking myself. Guys, do as I say and not as I do. Take the advice that you will find in your research over and over and over and over again from people who have been down there and done that and learned the hard way, whether it's Panama, Costa Rica, Ecuador, Peru, wherever it is down there, rent for one year. Find your little community, wherever you think paradise awaits you, wherever you're moving from in the US or Europe or Canada, wherever you're moving to, Find your little piece of paradise that, that you think you're going to be happy for the rest of your life and rent and live there for one solid year before plunking one penny down on buying a piece of land and building a house. Uh, how many people have tried to give me this advice and, and, and I, like you, just re refuse to listen to it and uh, th this, this advice applies to everybody in the world except me. So uh, here, here is one more tale uh, of some dumb gringo who went down there, you know, thinking he was going to create for himself a new life in Latin America. Guys, just, just, just rent for a year and, and, and make sure this is what you want to do with your life, you know, and, 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 and excuse this blanket statement with, which has nothing to do with, with prejudice against Latin, Latin American people. I, I hear that people who have moved to small villages in England suffer from the same problem. At least they have the English language. Uh, number one is the is the Spanish is is the uh, is the language Spanish language barrier. I'm okay in Spanish, you know. I have actually lived in Latin America for six years. If you add it all up, I've been traveling down there for 25 or half my life. I've been traveling down there half my life. I've actually lived in Latin America altogether for six years. I, I have a full year of university level Spanish, which I made A's in. I've taken these intensive Spanish courses several times. You know, I, I, can, I, I can do a real estate contract in Spanish. I can build a house in Spanish. What I cannot do in Spanish and will never be able to do in Spanish is sit around and jaw with people, is sit around and make friends with people in Spanish. I will never have the ability, I would never be able to get up on this rock in Spanish and tell you what I'm trying to tell you. After six years of living there, after speaking it for half my life. Guys, get serious. Are you ready for this? Even if, if, if you go to your little Spanish conversation classes, if you've taken a couple of these little 
whatever they call them, in-depth Spanish courses that they offer all over Latin America. Guys, there is a big difference. And then, then hanging out over a cup of coffee uh, and, and living somewhere and trying to be part of a community, it's, it's hell. It's hell. Uh, make no mistake about this. Have a long conversation with yourself and in and, and both languages. I, listen to me on this one. And, and the other one which is going to get me, uh, as I say, labeled, I'm sure, the races, everything else. Uh, guys, all right, I'm not going to say this. I, I, I'm going to spit it right out. I, I don't care how much you think that you're going to go down there, whether you're part of one of these gringo communities, you know, or, or completely out in the woods like I was you know, completely isolated with no English language. Uh, whichever tack you take, if, if you think on any level you are ever going to be accepted into the community where you're moving, that you're just going to go down there and, 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 and blend in. Get that fantasy out of your head. Maybe if you marry somebody, down there, you know, if, you're, if you find a, a wife or a husband who's part of the community, you'll you'll have a little bit, a little bit of an end. Uh, but even then, but especially if you don't marry somebody, you are never going to be part of any community. You are a gringo. You the you are money. The only reason that any of these people from the Rio Grande River all the way down want to see you coming is they want to separate you from your money. And you cannot blame these people. Okay? Don't kid yourself for one damn minute. Now you're gonna make you're gonna have some friends. And, and the people working on your land, uh, the people building your house for $11 a day, which is what I am, what, what I was paying to have my house built and through, $11 for an eight hour day. They're gonna be real friendly. They're gonna be the greatest guys in the world as long as you're pulling out $11 a day. All right, but when the house is done, the, the, the trees are planted. Those guys are going to disappear out of your life. And, 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 and there, there's many forms of thievery uh, in Latin America. You know, it's, uh, there, there's, the, there, there's the outright thieves. And in three years of living in Costa Rica, I was robbed 22 times. 22 times in Costa Rica. Now, in over a year in Ecuador, I've never been robbed one time. In Peru, over a year in Peru, I've only been robbed one time. Uh, but there's many sorts of thieves uh, in, in Latin America. There, there's the direct kicking in your door thief and stealing all your stuff or, or breaking into your car. And then you've got the, the immigration department thieves. This is particularly more and more of a problem in Ecuador, where every year these immigration fees and requirements get more and more and more onerous, where gringos are just saying, screw you, and just leaving Ecuador. Peru is much, much better on the immigration, which is part of the reason I chose Peru over Ecuador. There's that kind of thief. There is, there is just getting the, there, there's two pricing systems and don't let anybody tell you any different. There, there is one price for the locals and one price for the gringos every, in, in every community in Latin America. Now, it still happens that the gringo price, particularly, you know, the farther out you get from the gringo communities, is still, you can still get unbelievable bargains. And I paid for my three acres of gorgeous land in Peru, I paid thirty-eight hundred dollars for three absolute gorgeous acres, and and then got about uh, nine thousand into the house. 
before I hit the wall. I lasted, uh, not my last time, it was six months, you know, until my visa expired. Six months that, uh, that I survived, but I was ready to go after about four and a half, you know, when I figured this out. But guys, it ain't gonna happen. You are never going to be accepted. You are always going to be the gringo. And the gringo means the person with the money. And if they, if they don't rob you outright, they rob you through their charm and smiles. They want your money. They don't want your damn friendship. They, they, they don't want your cultural exchange. They sure as hell don't want your advice. They, they, they don't want your little pens and notebooks. Uh, what else do they not want? You, you know, guys, they want your money. As long as you're reaching into that pocket and pulling out that money, they're going to love you. But if, if, if you don't have, that's the people who have something to sell you. The people who have something to sell are always going to be your friend. If they have nothing to sell you, they don't give a damn about you on any level, unless they're this tiny minority who are just going to rip you off outright. But the vast majority don't give a damn about you. They don't give a damn about you. They never will. They have no reason to. Okay, and so as the people who have something to sell you are going to be your friends. And as soon as you have no more money to buy what they're selling, uh, they're gonna disappear back into the woodwork. And you are just gonna be one more gringo that means nothing to them, except a referral to the next gringo who comes into town. I think I've made my point clear, as Lindsay Williams would say, I beg of you rent for one solid year and at the end of that year if, if you have determined what's what I am telling what I and thousands and thousands and thousands of other gringos in my position are telling you is incorrect information and that you believe that you're happy down there and that this is the culture you want to spend your life in uh, with some language you can't understand fully you're a better man than I, and, uh, and, and, and good luck and more power to you. And I got a piece of, and I got a house and a beautiful piece of land to sell you in South Say, Peru for $15,000. You can pick up where I left off before heading back to Texas with my tail between my legs. And I think I've made my point. So I'll shut up now. Hasta luego. Amigos.